Well, hello and welcome everybody. I see all of you are logging in and I just wanted to play a little bit of music while we were waiting for everybody. I am Gustavo Tolosa and I'm your Start Solution Coach. I am a Start Solution Certified Coach and um, I'm also a webinar producer. I do produce a lot of webinars with other health-centered um, uh, professionals and um, there, those videos are all in my YouTube channel. I'm also a concert pianist and a teacher, and um, I hope you like this piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, a prelude in E minor. The reason that I chose this piece is because at first glance, it looks very simple on the page, and it looks kind of simple when you play it. But my point today is that simple does not equal easy. This is actually a very difficult piece to play, believe it or not, because it has such perfection. Every note is placed exactly where it should be placed, and it's so clean and pure that one little note that is not played correctly ruins the whole structure. So that is to say that that applies to most areas in our lives. And so in the start solution, it looks simple, uh, at first sight, it doesn't mean that it's easy. I think it's easy. A lot of people think it's easy, but it, it does have its ups and downs because you have to get used to um, a, good, a new way of thinking about food and a new way of eating. Um, so, and sometimes if one little aspect of it is not being followed uh, or uh, 100%, it can kind of slow you down or it, it can not produce the results that you want. So as with music, so with food. <laughs> so that was what I wanted to share with you today. And also remind you that I do give uh, live coaching sessions for the Start Solution. And also if you ever want to learn music, uh, whether it's theory on ear training or piano, and um, I charge a modest fee. So um, let me share with you before we start today's reading, and thank you for commenting. Uh, please comment 
um, and ask questions. I'm going to share with you a survey. I don't know if you noticed, but when you register for the webinar, at uh, the bottom of the page, there is a survey that you can take. And the survey said, what do you like to put on your baked potatoes? Because baked potatoes and baked sweet potatoes should be pretty much the the basics, the basis of, of the way that we eat. Of course, there are other starches, but we're talking about potatoes and sweet potatoes. And um, they're clean perfect, perfectly balanced, clean starches that if we don't ruin them with added uh, fats that are processed or any other animal product, they um, produce the results we want, which is health and um, a better weight, a more trim body. So these are some of the things that people wrote in the survey and I wanted to share with you. So we have uh, gravy and ke or ketchup. So yes, there is a way to make gravy that is plant-based and that it doesn't add extra uh, oils. And we could, you know, the, these recipes are at, in Dr. McDougall's website. You can go to drmcdougall.com and go on the recipes. And Mary has some amazing res recipes. I would be a little careful with ketchup unless I make it or unless I find a type of ketchup that doesn't have loads of sugar or, of course, oils or any other uh, chemicals, really, that we don't want. Uh, salsa is a wonderful thing to add on it because a lot, of, most of the salsas don't have oil. So, but still, you know, look at that and look at the amount of sodium. Corn, uh, that it's uh, one of the favorite size of Dr. McDougall and, and, of, and mine too. So corn, uh, beans, um, stir fry veggies on top of a baked potato, but make sure that you're, you know the, the technique to stir fry veggies without oil. Uh, and, I, and I have some videos about that in, in my YouTube channel. Someone's put nothing because guess what? Try eating a, a baked potato by itself. It's just so flavorful. Um, sometimes I just put a little bit of salt and pepper, or you can choose pepper and some um, other spices. Um, you like apple sauce on your potatoes? Great. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Uh, hot sauce, chili. Oh, I make a wonderful chili that is all plant-based, no oil added. Um, so let's see, salsa, vegetarian baked beans, yes, uh, gravy, mm, ketchup, and then, yeah, paprika, paprika, yes, um, and yeah, salsa, and someone put cooked spinach because I think that's a really good topping. It goes well. I like baked potatoes or sweet potato with a side of steamed broccoli. And today I had a big bowl of brown rice. And on top of it, I just put sauteed spinach with garlic. I sauteed, I water sauteed it or, and uh, it was delicious with a little bit of soy sauce. Um, so that was the service. Um, you also make fall cheese sauce. Yes, from oatmeal and nutritional yeast. Uh, yes, wonderful. There are, I do have some recipes um, for uh, cheese sauce. If you want to share your recipe, please send it to me and then I'll send it to everyone. Cinnamon on sweet potato, yes. It's just, believe it or not, just eating a potato or sweet potato doesn't have to be boring. There are so many ways to eat it. Okay, so that was the survey. Someone last week asked about edamame and I said, I'm not sure about the answer, but I'll look it up. And of course, I've had the mummy before many times. And it is these soybeans that are greening. They basically they haven't they're not mature yet. Um, they're healthy. They're plant this plant food, and it comes in its original package. It has to been squeezed and taken all the good stuff, and then you eat the oil. So. Um, of course, with the edamame, which is soybeans, they make tofu and other things, other products that are more processed 
And of course, we always want to be careful with how much processed stuff we eat, um, as we as 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 close to in, in its original form as possible is always the best. But there's nothing wrong with eat, having edamame unless you're having them every day, three times a day. You know, just make sure that it's this is a balanced way of eating and you have a number different number of legumes and a different number of beans and potatoes and sweet potatoes and rice etc um i wanted to give you all a quick summary of last week really quick though and then move on but before i do that anybody has any questions if you have questions please type it here while i set up the screen to um show the let's see to show the book, okay. And this is the um, this is the electronic uh, version of the book. Um, quick review. Um, Dr. McDougall has about fifty years of personal uh, medical care. He's a real MD, and he has treated patients in hospitals and. Um, his uh, medical office and emergency rooms, and he has taught medicine in, in, in universities, etc. Um, this is always something to keep in mind as you talk to people. Remember, you're maybe maybe there is a doctor here. I think last week we had a doctor that was attending the the webinar, uh, but most of us are not. So don't be giving out medical uh, in advice. You can always refer people to Dr. McDougall's website or book. So just remember that diet is a powerful medicine. And, you know, just telling people that it's, it's a good idea that if they have any um, illness or any uh, conditions to make sure that they check with their doctors. Hopefully the doctor will be knowledgeable about nutrition and its effect on health, um, but we don't know that. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, one of the things that I find is that people worry about getting enough of everything <laughs> and um, uh, we don't have to worry about that if we eat a balanced diet, like it's explained in this book, and that we'll see all along. Um, when you eat this way, you get enough protein, calcium, vitamins, and other nutrients. And all of these are built in the exact ratios in the original package of the food. Let's move on to another. Uh, remember that we talked about how Dr. McDougall had a massive stroke at age 18 because of the way the, the sad diet, the standard American diet, and that the recovery was slow and incomplete. Even up to today, he has a, a limp when he walks, and that is a reminder of those times. Um, we also talked about his experience at the plantation in Hawaii and how he saw the first generations of these workers from other countries uh, with uh, good health and trim bodies and then the second generation um, would be uh, less healthy because they started to incorporate western foods and the third generation just um, goodness you could see all of the diseases that we have today such as diabetes heart disease and many others okay um in 2002, when his contract with the St. Helena Hospital came up for renewal, he returned it with a void written over the front page, and he um, decided to start his own McDougall program that he was running at the hospital uh, in a upscale resort in Santa Rosa, California. And uh, since then, he's been running an extremely uh, successful, he has saved thousands of lives, including mine. I have attended it, well, attended it once, and then uh, I was very, very lucky uh, to have attended it many other times as a guest and making videos with him and things like that. And not only that, not only the 10-day program, but the three-day um, 
uh, weekend program that they run. Okay, and then chapter one, we talk. He talks about the traditional diet of people and how starch should be our primary source of digestible carbohydrate, and that fruits uh, are a part of this way of eating. But just remember that uh, fruit offers quick burning energy, mostly in the form of simple sugars, but it's not that slow burning sustaining starch that will keep us full for a long time and without cravings. So um, the other vegetables that are um, green, yellow, and orange uh, non-starch uh, vegetables, they provide flavor and texture, color and aroma to the starch-based meals. And they also give us uh, vitamin A and C. Um, but like he says later here, if you just eat only those vegetables, you will be hungry uh, all the time. So very important here, diet and nutrition advice is often focused on how much we ought to eat, and they miss the big point, which is how instead of this is more important than how much and how often and when we eat is what we eat. All right, what we eat is the most important. The gold medal for the carbohydrate is the starch, and starchy foods are plants that are high in long chain digestible carbohydrates. Um, let's see what else. Think of yourself as a starchivore, like a cat is a carnivore and a horse is a herbivore. Um, and let's see, then we have this very helpful list of grains, legumes, starchy vegetables, the non-starchy vegetables, the fruits, and then a really good explanation of the um, of this, uh, you know, of history basically, and 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 the nutrition, and the diets of wealthy ancient Egyptians. Very interesting, and you see all these little numbers here. Those are uh, at the very back. You can read every single study that Dr. McDougall is quoting or, or basing his uh, assertions on. And genetic testing has demonstrated that humans thrive best on starch. And one of his most famous phrases is, the fat you eat is the fat you wear, quite literally. Starches are a clean burning fuel. I love that, uh, those words. Starches are a clean burning fuel with just a very small fraction of their calories coming from fat. Some starches like potatoes and sweet potatoes are complete foods. By eating this food alone, you will easily meet your basic nutritional needs with the exception of B12. That's the only the one and only uh, supplement that Dr. McDougall recommends, B12. Okay, um, let's see, more, okay, so that was chapter one. Let's dive in chapter two, but before we do that, let me go back here and see if I have any questions from you. Hold on just a minute. Let me get out of here. You go. All right. So um, someone from Sweden says that we, you don't traditionally eat sweet potatoes there. The ones we have are imported from the U.S. I haven't gotten used to them yet. They taste too sweet. But this week I try a bite raw sweet potato and that was delicious. Perfect snack. The, the sweet potatoes are truly a perfect snack for that. I don't know about you, but I have what I call the sweet attack. <laughs> and it usually comes over about this time, about, uh, you know, in the after lunch in, and before dinner, sometime in the early afternoon. Um, and that slice of roasted sweet potato that has 
all that sweetness coming out of it. Um, and there are many kinds. The Japanese sweet potato is actually very, very sweet. The Hana sweet potatoes, very sweet. Um, so it depends. You have a choice, but they are the perfect snack. Thank you for saying that. Um, and, you know, this, this is... Um, this way of eating gives us such a variety that if there is something that you don't like, you don't have to eat it because if you still eat a variety, you will get all of your nutritional needs, as, he, as Dr. McDougall explains in his book. Uh, I'm always redirecting you to him because he is the authority. I have taken the course and gotten a certification to teach the course, uh, yet I'm not a doctor to tell you what prescriptions to take or not to take. I can talk about just plain food like I'm talking now. Um, so um, that is basically may eat a variety of foods and you will have um, a variety of nutrients. And if there is one or two things that you don't like, don't worry about it. And if you have any questions about food and not uh, prescription drugs, just um, give me, a, send me an email. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So let's move on to chapter two, which is very interesting. And uh, okay, we'll share it, my screen. Okay, very good. So in this chapter, Dr. McDougall talks about how people, uh, oops, hold on, I'm just doing some, okay, here we go. Uh, people passionate about starches are healthy and beautiful. And, and I would say, you know, read this, uh, I'm not gonna go through every, um, obviously every paragraph because you have already read it, hopefully but we will highlight a few things. Most people have been ingrained with this false notion that I, I hear also many times, and it is don't eat starches because starch turns to sugar, which turns to fat, making you gain weight. And of course, Dr. McGuire goes on to explain in detail why this is not true. And he, one of the things that uh, he starts with is that if this was were true, there would be an epidemic of obesity, obesity among the 1.73 billion Asians living on rice-based diets. Uh, now, a few years ago, when they started adopting the uh, American, the standard American diet, they have changed a little bit, <laughs> but still, uh, the percentage of obese people is not even close to the Western world. All right, then it says that starches satisfy the appetite and the hunger drive is what keeps us alive. And you cannot fool hunger by pushing yourself away from the table or putting down your fork between bites and eating from a small plate or counting calories because the hunger drive is very, very strong. You will never train yourself not to experience the discomfort associated with hunger, even if you practice until you're 90 years old. Um, the control that you do have, though, is over the foods that fill your, your plate. So meat and dairy and animal fats and vegetable oils lead to excess weight gain and illness and starches and vegetables and fruits support a trim, fit body and a lifetime of excellent health. So you may have heard that all calories are the same when it comes to body weight. Yet this is another very important topic because that is not true, especially when it comes to satisfying the appetite and accumulating fat. So there are three components of food provide that provide the fuel that we know as calories, okay? 
three things that we need to keep in mind. Maybe you need to write them down. And if you have your book there, really, really highlight this protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Starches like corn, beans, potatoes, and rice offer abundant carbohydrates and dietary fiber, uh, which are, uh, you know, when you have a lot of fiber and water, you have satiety that keeps you full, but they're very low in fat. So it basically, you know, look at what it says here. Um, let's say, let's take cheese, four calories per gram, meat, four calories per gram, oil, nine calories per gram. Um, so when you fill up on starch, you stay full for a long time. Let's see, let's go here. Hold on just a minute because I wanted to make sure that I got it. Okay. Starches only contribute one, just one calorie per gram. That means you can fill up your stomach with a lot of volume and yet the calorie count is not going to be very high. On the opposite, you can barely fill up your stomach and still feel hungry and your calories can be very high. That is called calorie density and we're gonna go over that um, later on in another meeting. So here is another <clears throat> phrase that people will say, excess starch uh, turns into fat. And so Dr. McDougall says excess starch does not turn to fat body. Why? So read this section very carefully because um, he explains it in a very clear way that this is incorrect. Um, these sugars are absorbed into the bloodstream where they're transported to trillions of cells throughout the body for energy. If, if you eat more carbohydrate than your body needs, listen to this, this is so crucial, you will store up to two pounds of it invisibly in the muscles and liver in the form of glycogen. This is so, so, so important <laughs> and so important to understand and even memorize it. If you eat more carbohydrate than your body needs, you will store up to two pounds of that invisibly in the muscles and liver in the form of glycogen. If you eat more carbohydrate than you can use as your daily energy and store as glycogen, you will burn the remainder off as body heat and through physical movement other than sports, such as walking to work, typing, yard work, fidgeting, whatever. Turning sugars into fats is a process called de novo lipogenesis. I know that sounds really complicated. That is a, a term that you should know, de novo lipogenesis. That is something that pigs and cows use. They, they can, you know, they, they can actually have, use this process to convert carbohydrates from grains and grasses into calorie dense fats. That's what makes them so appealing as a food source. Bees also do it, converting honey, simple carbohydrate, into wax. We humans, on the other hand, are very, but very inefficient at converting carbohydrate to fat. We don't do it under normal conditions because why? Well, it costs the body a lot of money. <laughs> I'm gonna say money, but it costs a lot of energy. And the body tries to, uh, to not waste energy. So the cost of this conversion is 30% of the calories consumed. That is a huge percentage for this uh, process that is not needed for energy because carbohydrates are the first source 
of energy and especially starch. Okay, I will let you read all that that we, I skipped, but it bears repeating that the fat you eat is the fat you wear. I'm going to stop here because next I want to talk about the met metabolic dollar, which I love that um, um, explanation that Dr. McDougall gives about the metabolic dollar. And um, let's see if you have any questions so far. Uh, Gustavo, did you lose your original weight by uh, only following? Yes, that's true. I was 75 pounds overweight. Someday I'm going to show you a picture. My face was really rounded and um, my stomach was so big that I even had trouble playing the piano, playing some pieces of music that require crossing hands and I would get agitated. And um, I had a, quite a few uh, health conditions that all of them disappeared. So um, the story of how I found Dr. McDougall is an interesting one, but not for this webinar. But uh, in, 20, in 2013, I attended the 10-day program as my last resort because I was um, totally disheartened. I didn't have anything else that I could try and it changed my life. And I followed it. I was 100% compliant. I came home and I did everything that, they, that I learned during those 10 days. Um, and that is how I lost it, with the starch solution alone and without doing one ounce of exercise. I'm not saying that I'm proud of that, but my life was a total, was, was so intense at the moment that I, I was working all the time and like many of many of us like a lot of people and had a lot of obligations and I just exercise was not a priority then so all the weight that I lost which was about 70 pounds uh, it, it, it's, it varied, you know, 65 to 70. Um, it was all just with food and with the starch solution. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Remember, I am a teacher and I love to answer questions. So as long as I know the answer, and if I don't know the answer, I will I know where to look for it, and I'll find out for you. Okay, so um, let's take a little break here, and I will tell you what some ideas of just practical meals, things that I do. It may they may not work for you. Like I said in the first webinar, we are all at different points of this journey and some of the things that are, you may not be ready to do yet and some of the things may not work for you yet, but together we can find a way. Okay, so for breakfast, basically I have two breakfasts. Uh, yes, sometimes I may have, I have other, but I, 90 percent of the time, if not more like 95 percent of the time, is oatmeal um, with fruits. And I used to put, at first, I would put a little bit of brown sugar because that is allowed under the starch solution. Then I switched to maple syrup. And now nothing because I cooked, I cook my oatmeal with chopped dates. And so the dates are so sweet that I don't need to add Processed sugar. That's what that word processed is what we're always careful about. And always thinking this. Um, if the screen freezes, you, there is a button that you can click to reload and it should reload. Because sometimes, depending on what kind of internet connections you have, it may freeze. So if someone could type, uh, in the comments here to help Cheryl that to click on the, the button that says reload, it, it would help her. Okay, so oatmeal, 
uh, with dates and then fruit, bananas, blueberries, raspberries, peaches, whatever you want to add. Um, I have my warrior's bowl, breakfast bowl in my cooking webinar that I did a couple of weeks ago. Another favorite of mine is hash browns. I don't have right now availability where I am of frozen ones. So the only way I can do it is by making my own and that's a little more work. So I don't do it as often, but hash browns with steamed broccoli are one of my favorite things. Um, so those are the two breakfasts. If once in a blue moon, literally, like maybe, maybe twice a year, um, I used to do this more, but now I don't. I make the famous, there are many ways of making delicious pancakes, and uh, you can find the recipes again on Dr. McDougall's website. Uh, for lunch, baked potatoes or sweet potatoes with a side of broccoli that is steamed or sautéed, um, sautéed spinach or chard or kale with garlic, uh, that is a really good lunch. Mashed potatoes that I mix with some winter squash and I mashed it all and um, with corn or with a very big salad, um, another, another lunch. Also another lunch is the oven fried potatoes, like steak potatoes. Um, they can actually come out tasting and, and and the texture of almost like being fried because they're so crunchy on the outside and so soft on, on the inside. There is a secret for that. <laughs> I'll share it with you in a, in a video later on. And if you make those kind of oven uh, fried uh, potatoes, you can also, while the potatoes are roasting in the oven, you can be roasting other veggies like cauliflower, some broccoli and peppers and onions and zucchini. And then for dinner, sometimes it's leftovers for lunch. And if not, some kind of a soup or stew. Um, usually I try to put uh, chopped potato, like cubed potatoes or sweet potatoes in them. Or um, rice, bean, rice and beans uh, or some kind of um, lentil stew. Um, I also like to put some kind of a, a steamed green if I have on hand. And then for snacks, which I'm not very, other than, other than the afternoon, I don't, I don't need snacks. Uh, but snacks, sweet potatoes, also those small peppers that are orange and red and yellow, uh, when you roast them in the oven, they are truly just like candy. I promise you've got to try that. Um, and if not, a fruit, a piece of fruit. Um, all right. So, and says still locked out. I, you know, guys, um, because this is a live webinar, I have, um, uh, what do you call it? I have a well, really, really high internet speed and I'm connected directly to the modem. So it's, uh, I, I know that the transmission is good on my end. You might want to go to speedtest.net and check what your internet uh, uh, speed is because it does make a difference when your screen freezes. It may be uh, when it's wireless, the speed goes up and down, and so it may freeze for that reason. But when the wet, when the replay goes out, it, it won't freeze for you. Okay. Um, good. All right. So let's move on, see if we can get through at least this chapter today, and I will share my screen again. Okay. All right, so the fat be, is the metabolic dollar saved for the next famine. Um, after you eat dairy, meat, nuts, oils, and other high-fat foods, you absorb their fat from your intestine 
into the bloodstream. From there, it is transported to billions of fat cells for storage. This is a very efficient process, okay? And it's, this is very important. That's why Dr. Madugal says the fat you eat is the fat you wear because it's pretty much an instantaneous, although it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty fast, um, the way that fat is stored because our bodies, remember, um, are made so that you know i, I don't want to get into any uh, anything about what your religious beliefs are whether you know where you think we're made or or whatever you know but our bodies are made to save fat for times of famine the problem is that in our times the times of famine and short shortage of food doesn't doesn't it never comes <laughs> so um you know, we keep accumulating. And um, this is a very efficient process. It only uses 3% as opposed to 30% for making uh, starches into fat. It only takes 3% of the calories you consume to move the fat from your fork or spoon to your body fat. It's, it just almost directly goes there. This storage takes place almost effortlessly. And after uh, every fat-filled meal. If you have your body fat chemically analyzed, it will reveal the kinds of fats that you commonly eat because they're pretty much the way you eat them, that's the way they end up in your, in your body. Fortunately, starches contain very little fat for you to wear. They contain it in the right percentages and unless you eat high, uh, more fat-filled uh, you know, things like nuts and seeds and avocados, you know, basically you the fat is at the level that we want it. Um, so another very important thing here is what Dr. McDougall says, that every year millions of people lose weight. But um, remember that a lot of people that are thin, um, that doesn't mean that they're healthy. So, in fact, some of the methods to lose weight often cause illness. And he says that the best example of this negative effect of dieting is the once popular Atkins type, low carbohydrate, high protein approach. These diets work by very severe carbohydrate deprivation which causes a state of illness that is commonly caused, you know, called ketosis. And when people become sick, they lose their appetite and lose weight. This method for losing weight or extra pounds is analogous to the weight, uh, law, to the weight loss seen in people taking cancer chemotherapy drugs. And then he goes into this, which is very true. I don't know about you. It's true for Dr. McDougall, and it certainly is true for me, that moderation is impossible for passionate people. Uh, this is not to say that there are those um, people, <laughs> I was going to say annoying people, uh, that I, I'm sure you have some. I'm just saying it as a joke. Um, you know, I have some friends that, you know, you put a big plate of some delicious bad food and, you know, they'll take a little bite and, oh, that's okay, I'm done, you know, or or you can give them a, a nice piece of, of cake and they will have a little bite and say, oh, I'll save the, or the candy bar, I'll save, I will save this for later. Um, so, um, it just... For most people today, doesn't moderation doesn't work. Uh, have you ever met a smoker who quit smoking by cutting down? Or an alcoholic who sobered up by switching to beer or having just one drink a day? So teasing us with a little bit of our most tempting vices is not a viable solution. Cutting down the portion size of <laughs> fried chicken or gravy or biscuits and ice cream is a slow torture for most. 
and is one of the primary reasons that diets fail. All right, this is a lady that I've met, and, um, and it's a real person. Like I said in the first webinar, you will see the Start Solution um, stars. This is one of them. And um, we, believe it or not, have covered Chapter 2. So let's go back here and see if you have any questions or comments about what we just saw. And let's see. If not, we will let's see what time it is. And let's say that we have five more minutes for answers and if questions and answers. And if not, we will at least get started on chapter three. Would you like for me to go on? Chapter three is a key chapter because it talks about uh, poisons and you know you, you need to know which one of those you know what the poisons are so that of course you're not going to eat them um, yes ketosis is different in water fasting than in say the keto diet um, I think so uh, Sophie but I will find out since I have been to true north also in Santa Rosa many times, which is a fasting facility. They also have food um, for people that don't want to fast. And I have done fasting myself. Um, so I'll find out. That is a really good question. Um, when you do fasting that is longer than four, four, three, four, five days, then you do need medical supervision, as I understand it because they need to be checking the levels of many of your body functions. Okay, all right. Let's go on a little bit even if it's not too much, uh, but at least we will get started with chapter three. And then guys, I will see you next week and um, make sure in the meantime, if you don't mind to go to my YouTube channel uh, go to YouTube, type my name, Gustavo Tolosa, and subscribe to it because I upload new videos every week, and it does help me a little bit when I have more subscribers. Okay, so there are five major poisons found in animal foods. I would say that this chapter is so important that I would read it at least two times at least two times, if not three. You need to become an expert on this. Okay, so let's jump in right into it. I will move on from this here. Um, okay, and uh, five key. It doesn't matter, like it says here, whether you grill meat that comes from a cow or a pig or a sheep or a lamb or a chicken or scrambled eggs or a duck or drink milk that comes from a cow, goat or sheep. Uh, you will see that all animal foods provide essentially the same nutrition and have roughly the same impact on your health. So look at this. This is, uh, this is very important, so we can't rush through it. This chart here uh, is a chart to really study. Look at beef, chicken, and cheese, and the amounts of protein, fat, cholesterol, methionine, methionine and dietary acid. Uh, we don't want to be consuming acidic food for many reasons. We, Dr. McDougall will explain that la later. You want alkaline or a very low acidic uh, food. So you want food that is in the single digits, like one, two, three, uh, or even better, negative numbers, because that negative numbers are it's so alkaline that it's just um, ideal. So look at uh, beef, chicken, and cheese in the protein, uh, protein and fat are expressing percentages of total calories 
37% for beef, 46% for chicken, and 25% for cheese of protein. And remember that if you eat an excess of protein, uh, it's, um, it's not good. And I'm sure that you have read it, and if not, that you will read it this week. And we'll get to it. Look at the fat. <laughs> Beef has 57% fat and, and chicken 51. It's, it's nearly the same. Cheese 74. Cholesterol. Look, actually chicken has more cholesterol than beef. Chicken has more cholesterol than beef and cheese. And it's supposed to be a healthier choice. Um, we'll talk about the methionine and the dietary acids. Look how high. The 10 is the highest number in the acidic scale. So cheese is the most acidic food, if we could call it a food, um, that you can put in your mouth. <laughs> um, look at the cholesterol in eggs. Uh, and then look at the cholesterol in beans, rice, and potatoes. Zero. Look at the protein that is already in nature. You know, the highest protein here is the beans. That's why you've got to be a little careful of not eating beans in unlimited amounts. You know, rice, nine, potato, eight, sweet potato, seven. Uh, fat is very, very low, just, uh, just the percentage that our bodies need. Cholesterol is zero in all of them. And look at the dietary acid of in sweet potatoes. It's minus nine. All right, so um, let's see. Um, plant foods are high in carbohydrate and fiber, low in fat and dietary acids, and have no significant amount of cholesterol. And they don't have excess amounts of protein on average. So, Five components of animal foods that are poisoning you. Your body can only handle so much protein, fat, and cholesterol, and sulfur-containing amino acids. And as So another sentence to highlight and underline, our bodies can handle only so much of these elements. It's not unlimited amounts that we can consume. When you take in more than your body can use, um, you know, these amounts act as poisons. On a typical Western diet, these toxic byproducts build up in your system on a daily basis. Um, as if ingesting these toxic substances isn't bad enough, their effects are additive and cumulative. So taking in too much protein and methionine and dietary acid weakens our bones over time. Excess dietary fat and cholesterol clog the arteries and increase the risk of cancer. In fact, these five elements that are all found in animal foods in quantities far greater than we are able to use and excrete, excrete harm us in many ways. So this is where we're going to stop today. And I would like for you to really pay attention to this chapter and, and maybe bring questions. We're going to see um, how, how protein can be a toxin, how fat can be a toxin, how cholesterol and methionine can be toxins, okay, and dietary acids. So... That's important because he explains how they impact your body as toxins. So this is another a real person that has done great with the program. And then we're going to move on next week to chapter three. So next week, we will move on to, uh, we will finish chapter uh, three. And we will move on to four. So 
Thank you again, guys, for being here. It's just so delightful. It, it really helps me as well, even though I have read the book and been at, there with Dr. Montugo by his side, side so many times. Uh, this helps me. So I appreciate you joining me in this. And like I said, um, if you don't mind, subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page, which is called Dr. Starch. And um, if you'd like to hear a little bit more about me as a musician, as a professional musician, my web page is gustavotolosa.com. And the other page I have is Plantemus, where I'm, it's in Spanish. If you know anybody that speaks Spanish and wants information, and it's all free, there's nothing there that they buy. Um, and I also have a page that is in English. And let's see, remember to visit Dr. McDougall's website, which is, I'm typing it here, drmcdougall.com, all right. And someone asked me, I just remember last week, someone asked me about uh, cons the concern of not getting enough fats for brain function, another thing that is uh, misleading and you'll read it in this week's chapter but remember everything we eat has fat in it good fats and one of the things you can use is chia and flaxseed avocados and um, beans and rice and nuts and seeds so don't worry about that if you're eating a balanced diet all right, so how do we find you on YouTube and support you? Uh, thank you, Liz. I um, just go to YouTube like this, uh, youtube.com. And when you're there, just type Gustavo Tolosa and the, ch the, the um, channel will appear. Just subscribe, you know, I'm, uh, by subscribing, it helps me a little bit in uh, in the views that I get. Uh, every now and then I put out a, um, most of what I put out is free, but every now and then uh, I create a cooking webinar that is fun and full of original recipes of my mother and my grandmother and some that I have made my own. And, um, and I charge a very modest fee and um, I appreciate it when you guys support that. But and that's it. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's see what else. Um, well, yes, I look forward to next week. And uh, let's see. Um, I, if you want one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, um, it, it's, it's in my Facebook page. There's a button, I think. But if not, just send me an email and I can tell you about it. My email is bornforhealth. Um, one of the first email addresses that I had was called, is called Born for Piano, which I still use it today. And then when I started uh, with the Start Solution and changing my, my life with food, I, I was able to get this email, which is Born for Health. So I have Born for Piano and I have Born for Health. So you can email me there. And um, let's see. Yeah, stay healthy, guys. I don't know how, um, let's see. I don't know how you are doing in your neck of the woods um, with all of this uh, coronavirus, um, you know, pandemia. And, uh, but I hope that you're staying healthy. And one of the ways that we have, Control over it is to keep our immune system high by eating right. And, oh, I have to tell you, my friend Catherine Lawrence made one of the most amazing cooking demonstrations that is called Immune uh, Boosters and Busters. <laughs> so if you want to see that, it's free. We made that free. That is, that is located at uh, Food savedme.com and go to the online classes and look for that immune uh, 
cyst, uh, immune boosters and busters. And I hope that you will enjoy it because it's just fun. And the recipes that you, she shows you there are incredible. All right. Have fun, everybody. And I will see you next week. If you have any questions, send me an email. Bye-bye.